Welcome to Shamba Shepa. We have traveled all over East Africa to find hard-working farmers. We want to celebrate them while giving them the knowledge they need. So they can adapt and make their farms more productive even while the climate changes. We want to support them to get better yields and increase their income. We meet families and enter their kitchens to explore how to cook in cleaner, faster, cheaper ways, while at the same time increasing family nutrition. We will see how farmers from across the region can benefit from our experts' advice, while also learning from each other in so many ways. Join us on these journeys and share in the farmers' experience as they shape up their shambas on the Shamba Shape Up Safari. Welcome to Shamba Shape Up. Today we are at the banks of River Tanato. It seems like we are in an area with plenty of water. But the Shamba we are visiting is in a quite dry area. We want to see if we can get this water from here and straight to the Shamba. And the solution might not just be what you think. We are going to capture this water before it gets here. Aha! And for this and much, much more, join us on Shamba Shape Up. Today we are in Tarakanidi. And we are visiting Alfred and Philippine Muadi. They are father Patrick Kiria. And their three children, Lea Mokami, Elosi Kaguni, and Fortune Kinya. The farm covers two and three quarter acres. Agroforestry is a serious business, as are green grams, maize, pigeon peas, bananas, and down underneath, pumpkin. Hey, hey. hey. Alfred. Philippines. Yes. How are you? I'm fine. Hey, it is so hot. Is it normally this hot? No, it is because uh, we are waiting for rain. Ah, uh, it okay. Is to rain. Mm -hmm. So, what challenges are you facing? I'm facing uh, shortage of water. 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 Hmm. Philippines, mm -hmm. tell me more about this water problem. The rain comes. Mm -hmm. They fall down, mm -hmm. and we don't have enough tank to fetch water. Where do you store your water? In that tank. In that small ah. tank? Yes. Mm -hmm. Ah, so there's no other place that you store it? No. Uh -huh. And when there's no rain, where do you get your water? We from? go to the to fetch water mm -hmm. to the river. From the river? Yes. So that is the, the water that you're using for cooking, for drinking, and for even yes, watering even your crops? For Ketro. Mm. Do you think there's something we can do about I'm that? I'm sure. Mm -hmm. We have to do something about that. What other challenges do you have in your shamba? Storage. Mm -hmm. After harvest. For preserving this cereal for a long time. Mm -hmm. uh, even the colour or the quality. Mm. So it loses. You're in luck because, Caro? When Shamba Shepa visits your shamba, we don't come alone. Mm -hmm. We come with experts who are going to give you advice on the various issues that are affecting you. Yeah. And we make sure by the time we are leaving, yeah. you're fully shaped up. Thank you. But in the meantime, kindly give us some time so that we can pitch our tent and get back to work. Then yeah. we'll come back and see you later. Is that okay? Yes. Okay. All right. See you later. See you shortly. Okay? All right. All right. Yes. Bye. Okay. So let's pitch the tent and get ready for work. Our first expert today is Duncan Mukuna from Sigenta. We have asked him to come and give Alfred some advice on how to best store his grain after harvesting. Around one quarter of all the maize harvested in Kenya is lost every year because of poor storage. Let's see how Duncan can help. There he is. Duncan! Yes, yeah, sorry. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Good, good. Good. Uh, Alfred. Sir? Tell Duncan what you're going oh, through. Oh, my big challenge is pest. Okay. Mm -hmm. What kind of pest? Okay. Uh, the stock with these, the nevos right. in the storage. I see. So you, your sale has gone down considerably. Yeah, so down. Uh -huh. yeah. Now, Duncan. Yes, Tony. I'm sure you have observed the store. Yes. yes so right. what have you seen inside there? He has a lot of uh, produce that he has harvested. But the uh, method of stalling, I think that's where he is getting it long. Mm -hmm. In his store, there are some other items which are not supposed to be in the store. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So he needs to have a store or a storage facility for his grains. Yeah. And uh, for other staffs, he needs to store them in a different store. Mm -hmm. And then uh, his uh, bags with the grains, they're on the floor. If the farmer uh, presses his bag with the grains on the floor, he is more likely to get a lot of damage from the pest that the weevils and the termites that will come in contact with that grain. And uh, also because of the cold moisture that is coming from the floor, it might affect the grains 
and that's why you hear the incidences of afrotoxins. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing, you'll have a lot of damage from the pest because they are coming to contact with the bugs moisture. So he need like a pallet. He need to place the pallet on the floor and then he places his bag, uh, which is uh, containing the grains on top of that. The bags should be laid flat on the pallet so they are off the floor and away from the walls. This stops damp getting into the grain and allows air to move freely around the bags. But how can Alfred stop weevils and other pests from damaging the grain? From Sigenta, we have a modern weapon to fight against uh, uh, the weevils and all these uh, storage pests mm -hmm. in this case. It is the product by the name Actel Gold Dust. Is it uh, preventative or curative? It has both curative and preventative. Like Alfred case, uh, because I've seen a few damages of his grains, uh, when he uses the actelic, it will fully control all those uh, pests that are either destroying his grains. So you say he can store his grains for up to how many months? Eight to one year. Eight months eight to eight months to one year. To one year. Yes, yes, yes. So when the, when the prices are right, he can sell his grain and make a killing. Yes, he is dry and he is home and dry. <laughs> This sounds great! So, we asked Duncan to show us how to use Actelic Gold. The first step is to ensure the grain is clean and ready for storage. So, we asked everyone to help us sieve the maize to get rid of the chaff and any dirt that might still be around. Next, Duncan put on his protective clothing. Farmers, it is very important when handling any kind of chemical on the farm to always protect yourself first. Next, spread out a bag of the clean maize on a tarpaulin. Empty the contents of the Actelli Gold evenly over the grain. 50 grams will treat a 90 kilo bag. Mix well so the powder is spread throughout the maize. Then put the maize back in the bag. Although grain can be stalled for up to three months without treatment, dusting with Actelli Gold can extend storage life to 12 months. It is safe to eat after six months. The beauty and the benefit of using Actelli Gold, he is able to reduce his post-harvest losses to zero. Then in terms of the quality of the grain after stalling, the Actelic Gold is able to give you eight months to one year storage with free pest. So you are able to wait for the light market so that the prices can rise and you are able to sell your yield at a good price. And the other things, it will be of good quality compared with farmers either who are not using the Actelic Gold. So for Alfred, uh, the benefit of using Actelic Gold are more than 101. Mm -hmm. Yes. Alfred, Yeah. you've heard of the benefits. Are you happy with the benefits of Actelic? Uh, I'm, half, I'm happy now. Aha. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. All right. Okay. Thank you so much, Duncan. Very good, sir. Good storage practices are so important. But as we are now moving to the short rains and it's time for planting, I asked Alfred to keep Duncan here a little bit longer so he can advise us on seed management. As with many things in life, if you don't start right, your chances of ending well with a good harvest are much reduced. So, Alfred, yeah. farmers around here, what do they like planting? They like planting green grams. Uh -huh, that's dengue. Yeah, that's uh -huh. and maize. And maize. Yeah. Do they face any problems? They, mm -hmm. they have. They Which have, ones are these? Uh, in part of insect signs. Insects. Some of the seedlings they buy, some of them are not cured. Mm -hmm. So they have challenges of not sprouting good. Mm -hmm. yeah. As we've learned with Alfred, he's a farmer who wants to get the most advice that yeah. he can, yeah. other than the knowledge that he has because he also teaches other farmers. Exactly. So what more can you add? It all starts with the seed. Certified seed is good for a farmer because uh, at least you are buying, um, you know, seeds which are from good source. Mm -hmm. yeah. So with the light seed, uh, the right method to prepare that seed so that it can germinate, it can give a, a good crop vigor, mm -hmm. then the production-wise, he'll still get his yield as what uh, he is looking at. Mm -hmm. So Duncan, so, you're saying uh, before you plant, it's very important how where you get your seed exactly. and how you treat it. Exactly. Just the same way you bring up a child when they are young, they grow according to how you've taken care of them when they are young. Ah, you got it right. The first step then, always buy certified seed. 
But the soil is full of enemies, and just like any child, no matter how good the certified seed, it needs to be protected, at least until it's strong enough to look after itself. This is why Sigenta developed Apron Star. Uh, the advantage of using Apron Star basically is uh, you're protecting your seed from uh, harm that it will get when it gets to the soil. Apron Star, from the word apron, it's like you're wearing an apron to protect yourself. Apron from... Star. Yes. The, the armor. Why. Yeah, the armor. Mm -hmm. You armor yourself, you protect yourself from dust, either from fallen things. Uh, and we talked about the soil pest. Soil mm -hmm. pest, we are talking like some termites, mm -hmm. some cutworms mm -hmm. that are in the soil, mm -hmm. and some diseases that come along when it's raining. Mm -hmm. Like you find the seed are rotting. Mm -hmm. So those are the benefits that Apron Star protect your seed from. Yeah. And also, it increases the vigor in terms of germination of your seed. Well, this sounds great, but I want to know. How long does Apron Star protect the seed for? Apron Star will give you protection of your crop to 21 to that days. Okay. Protection from the, uh, the soil pest and the soil diseases. So that means by the time now 21 or 30 days are elapsing, the crop is grown mm -hmm. and you're able now to come with the rest of the program to control the pest and diseases. Mm -hmm. So because the most challenge that farmers face is when now they are doing uh, planting the seed and also at that moment when the seed or the seed ring is young. And all these benefits translate to the money the farmer is looking because mm -hmm. he'll have more uh, plant population per acreage mm -hmm. and also the yield will increase with that population. Mm -hmm. That's the beauty about uh, Apron Star and the protection it gives to your crop. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. Does it treat all seeds? Yes, you, can, you are able to treat all seeds regardless, the small seeds and even the bigger seeds. So, so Alfred can treat green grams, can treat maize, can so treat um, beans. Tomatoes, yeah. cabbages, mm -hmm. yeah. if you have to do all those crops. Mm -hmm. you're able wow. To treat. wow. Yes. So after you've applied the uh, Apron Star, yes. do you plant immediately? Yeah, you come immediately and plant your, your, your seeds. Mm -hmm. Is it safe? Yes, it's safe because the product is here to treat the seed, mm -hmm. not the head product that will come. Mm -hmm. Because you're treating the seed so that now the crop that will bear the fruit can also have that uh, quality and quantity in terms of that. Mm -hmm. So in terms of safe, uh, safety of the product is safe to the crop that you are treating. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, so another that, question. Yes. It is harmful to, uh, to our health as we, as we farmers? Actually, when you're handling all the chemicals, you need to put on your PPE, the mm -hmm. personal protective gear. So, once again, Duncan is going to put on his protective clothing. We cannot say enough how important it is to wear protective clothing when using chemicals. Now, let's see how to use Apron Star. First, empty the contents of the packet into a mixing jug. 10 grams is enough to treat 4 kilograms of large seeds. Then, add 300 ml of water. Stir well and pour the mixture into a basin. Add the 4 kilogram of seeds and mix well. I've been always a farmer, but I was not following the, the technologies of the new farming. So I appreciated it for when the expert came, addressed me. And that's it. The seeds are ready. Plant within one to two days. Coming up after the break. How to make money from trees. How protecting the soil can increase yield. And a solution to bringing the river closer to the shamba. Stay with us to find out how. Welcome back to Shamba Shape Up. We are in Tarakanithi and we are visiting Alfred and Philippine Mwati. We have seen how to store maize. And the importance of treating seeds. But have you thought of how to make money from trees? And how protecting the soil can increase yield. Carol, no, no time, time to waste. waste. Let's get back to, back work. to work. But first, Remember when we arrived, we found Alfred and Philippine's children having to spend so much time and energy collecting water from the river when they could be studying for their exams. Well, Shamba Shape Up have a solution. We are going to bring the river to the Shamba. Rivers are fed by the rains, so we are going to trap the rainwater even before it gets to the river. Pretty smart, don't you think? We'll need some gutters to capture the water from the roof and a tank to store it all in. Now, while the Shamba Shape Up crew get to work, I'm going to meet Nixon Wafula. Nixon is a conservation agriculture expert and is here to give us some advice on making money from trees. 
trees can be a very profitable business and have so many benefits to other farming activities, but only if managed correctly. It's a system known as agroforestry. Let us find out more about it. Nixon. Yes, yes. You've met our farmer. We've worked with Alfred for quite some time. Yes. And he's a very cooperating farmer. So I'm sure, Alfred, you know what agroforestry is. Agroforestry is planting trees in terms of even planting crops, animals, and other. So you have trees, you have animals, and you have crops together. Yeah. yeah. Is that right, Nixon? Yeah, that is about right. Uh, agroforestry is all about planting trees and also crops and animals so that they exist harmoniously and they enable uh, the farmer to reap uh, the biggest economic value from them. You can do actually trees as a business. You can sell animal feeds from trees like Kaliandra, Lukina. You can also uh, sell, uh, uh, get medicine from trees you can also get firewood, you can also get timber, and these are some of the benefits that you can drive from trees. And that's why Alfred has planted a lot of trees. Yeah. yeah. You want to get all the benefits. Yeah. For trees to provide the most benefit possible, they need to be pruned. But how to prune a tree depends on what the farmer wants to use the tree for. Now Alfred is expecting to use this tree for timber. Yes. Then we need to do some pruning. Yeah so that we get good quality timber mm -hmm. and enough girth to produce sizable timbers. What do you use for pruning? Uh, I normally use this for big branches, mm -hmm. like this one. Mm -hmm. You cut. Yes. Uh, for, for, the, for for the trees, which is not bigger in branches, I use this one. Do you recommend farmers to use this? Uh, we don't recommend these tools, especially the panga. Yeah. It causes a lot of damages. How? It doesn't produce a clean cut. Oh, it leaves a wound. It leaves a wound or mm -hmm. it distracts the whole green. What do you recommend? For bigger branches, we recommend pruning saw. Identify the branch that you want to remove. Mostly you want to remove the outer one that is probably going lateral, the lateral branches. And then you uh, take like maybe five centimeters from the main trunk. You don't cut close to the trunk like this one. You cut at least five centimeters away from the trunk. Slowly by slowly. You can see our pruning saw has given out a clean cut, unlike that one that would have been given with a, a machete or a pang. For small branches, we normally recommend secateur. This one can cut small branches easily. And then you don't cut close to the to the stem, but you cut a little bit at a, a distance. Yeah, ah. you see. Yeah. Uh -huh. So we recommend farmers to have some of these tools so that it makes work easier and clean. So now agroforestry involves a lot. Yes, yes. There is also fodder trees. Yes, yes. Does Alfred have fodder trees here? Yeah, I've seen some lukina. Lukina. Around. Yes. Where is it? Uh, it's somewhere there. Can we go have a look? Uh, yes, we can. Ah, let's go have a look. Fodder trees are not grown for their timber, but for their leaves, which can be fed to cows, sheep, goats, and even poultry. The leaves can be very nutritious. But do these forage trees have to be pruned in a different way from trees grown for timber? This is Lukina. This uh, tree is uh, very rich in proteins. If you want it purely for forage, for those who have high demand of forage, then we recommend that you cut it uh, one foot above the ground. So that one will uh, promote several offshoots uh, sprouting. That one, it will supply more forage than if it was for, for timber. So if you want it for timber, where do you prune? You cut at the top, the apical cut, two meters above the ground. That one will promote the girth widening. In five to 10 years, it will give you a very good timber. But at the same time, it will also be giving you uh, some uh, forage mm -hmm. along the way. Mm -hmm. Yes, so there are two ways you can uh, manage. If you want it for uh, timber, cut it above two meters. And if you want it for more forage, you cut it one foot above the ground. The new technologies are so beneficial, especially pruning of even trees. Well, there you are, farmers. Manage your trees well, and they can do so much for any farm.
Hello there at home. There's been a lot of misinformation concerning the COVID-19 vaccine. But it is important that you get it as soon as possible. We have asked some people why they think it is important that you get the vaccination. We've not been able to work, travel, or go for events. For us to be able to do this again, we all need to get the COVID-19 vaccination. We've heard many stories about how this vaccination is not good for you. But these stories are not true. We have not been able to get together with our friends and families. We don't want you to die. So when the time comes, get vaccinated. We really should listen to the experts. We are asking you to trust the facts and the research done by leading doctors and scientists all over the world. People are dying and there's something we can do about it. We can stop this. We do not want you to get sick. We do not want your families or your friends to get sick. We don't want you to die. Go on, get vaccinated. Our final expert today is Josfat Musenze, an expert in conservation agriculture. Taraka is generally a hot, dry place, so we've asked Josfat to give us some advice on how to keep moisture in the soil by reducing evaporation. And best of all, it doesn't cost the farmer a single shilling. Conservation and culture is a farming where you practice three principles. Mm -hmm. One, minimum soil disturbance, two, residue retention, mm -hmm. and three, crop rotation. So today, what are we concentrating on? Today, we want to demonstrate the residue retention of the crops in the farm. Uh, why is it very important to have soil cover? There is no uh, direct heat from the sun. Mm -hmm. Why is that important? Meaning, there is no evaporation. It's mm -hmm. very simple. So if there is no evaporation, it means with the minimal rain we have in the Raka Nidhi, mm -hmm. the farm can harvest. But with the direct heat over on the sun, mm -hmm. there is a lot of evaporation, the soil loses the, mm -hmm. the, the, the water. And also above all, the soil also loses the pH value of the soil. Mm -hmm. It means that the, the, the humans, the fertility of the soil will be not better. Mm -hmm. The soil loses its yeah, fertility. fertility. All right. The, the other thing is that when we have the residue in the farm, when it decomposes, there is a lot of humans. Mm -hmm. in the soil. And when there is a lot of humus, the soil is fertile and the soil profile is good. Mm -hmm. So for today, we want to enforce the issues of the residue by doing it practically with Alfred, mm -hmm. so that Alfred now, he can understand it and also he can use it also to train other farmers. Mm -hmm. Because he can remember, you can't give what you don't have. That is so true. he has to understand the principles very clearly. So what we are going to do today is to set a residue demo plot. In this residue demo plot, we measure two squares equal. Mm -hmm. One square will have residue, the other one will not have residue. Mm -hmm. Then on that also we use the same amount of water, we water the same two squares with the same amount of water. Then the farmer will see clearly the difference of where there is residue and where there is don't have residue. Wow, all right, so it's a kind of a comparison. Exactly, and the farmer will now make a decision, now mm -hmm. this is good, this is not good. Based on what he's seen. Exactly. All right, seeing is believing, yes. let's do this. So first, We'll move the residues. Can I help? Mm -hmm. Now, what we'll do is we'll get two squares equal, which is sample now of the farm. In the first square, we will put residues. Still this one. So, in one plot, we are adding the crop residue and some manure to cover the soil. And in the other plot, we are leaving it open to the sun. Now we will use the same amount of water to water the two demo plots to see the difference. We are assuming this is a rain, which is now a rain in these two farms. The soil is being carried by the water. Yes. Because it is the surface. Yes. In this surface, yep. no running of soil mm -hmm. because it is already mulched or covered. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. After some time, we can see now the difference. with the solar now we have here in Daraka. Yes, within, yes. within, within a few hours, mm -hmm. you will see different All right. from the one with the residue and the, the one, one without. without. All right, so Josephat and Alfred, yep. I think our work here is done for now. Done. Now, while we wait to see what happens to the water we poured over the two plots, I think we can check up on what's happening to the rainwater harvesting system. I think it should almost be finished. Yes, Carol, it's going really well. Carissa's finished putting up the guttering to catch the water from the roof. 
not long until it's finished. Good work, Aris. Very impressive. A few hours have gone by and it's time to see what's happened to our two demo plots. As we scrape away the maze of us, I think it's clear. The plot on the right that was covered is still looking wet. The one that was uncovered on the left is dry. Now, if we smell the soil, there is a marked difference. The one we covered still smells damp. And if the two samples are compressed in the hand, the covered soil is sticking together, while the uncovered soil is dry and crumbling. It's clear to see that the soil covered with a layer of mulch or crop residue holds water in the soil. But that's not all. Covered soil also helps stop weeds from growing too. So now, we are sure to get a bumper harvest. As you follow this, they are the best ways of being in a good farming system. Farming is the backbone of in our country, Kenya. We also feed in the, the people living in the urban areas from our farms. So let's say farming is a good production of feeding the country and even the main world. Meanwhile, the rainwater harvesting system is finished. Wow, it's looking good. No more trekking to the river every day to fetch water. Time saved that Alfred's children can put to much better use doing schoolwork and preparing their lives ahead. That tank is so much for domestic use in our home. My family will be using even the clean water. Well, another great shape up, Carol. Until next week. Goodbye. Bye.